could be run out. Oh, oh shit. special New Year edition of They Think It's All Over. 1999 is what we spent on decorating the set. <laughs> <laughs> My New Year's resolutions are not to swear, smoke or be rude to Gary Lineker, starting after the show. <laughs> you juggy <-eared> git. <laughs> <laughs> David's special guest is a comedian who says his favourite game is sitting in the pub awarding people marks out of ten for their resemblance to celebrities. So please give a big warm welcome <laughs> to George Michael. Two out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> David's other guest is a man who's earned himself a reputation as Wales' most famous hard man until Ron Davis came along. <laughs> Billy Jones. <laughs> With Gary and Rory is a presenter from Channel 4's 11 o'clock show, who thinks he used to write for the hypnotist Paul McKenna, whereas, in fact, he's in the audience at one of Paul's shows right now, and Paul's <laughs> just convinced him he's on They Think It's All Over. <laughs> Ian Lee. Yeah. We open the show by playing a pair of goal celebrations and asking the teams what they're about. David, Phil and Vinny, your celebration features Britain's golden wonder himself, Michael Owen. The pressure from Riedler. Now Owen. And Michael Owen is away. Oh, that's a brilliant finish! That was Michael Owen completing a hat-trick against Newcastle in September. But why David's team the hand-rubbing? Just thinking, Gary, is it true that in scoring that one goal, he actually covered more distance than you did in an entire career? <laughs> hey, what's the distance from the wicket to the pavilion? <laughs> <laughs> did he forget but... his mittens? <laughs> <laughs> he normally had them on the thing through his kit, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but because he had the short sleeves, he couldn't have that because... Yeah. After... <laughs> Could have been goal bonus, couldn't it? He might have given it there. Oh, great. I've got a goal yeah. bonus straight down Mother Care, yeah. new outfit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 have, you ever, have you ever marked Gary, Vinny? Well, not marked. No. <laughs> no. Never got near Never him. played against him, either. No. Leicester. Leicester, we played. Got one of our players sent off. He did? Yeah. No. He did. Do you hold a grudge ever? No. Vinny, I thought the film was very good, by the way. Very... I, I don't care what Gary says, I thought it was very good. <laughs> you see, now, Vinny, if you'd done that before you grabbed Gascoigne's bollocks, then he wouldn't have gone, <laughs> Oh, no! <laughs> Just done that and gone... Here you go. Vinny? <laughs> oh, that's better, that's a bit warmer, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Is he... Cos he's in the Cubs, isn't he? Yeah. Is, it, is he doing fire making that night? He's <laughs> just doing a bit of a practice. Because he's got the badges, isn't he? Yeah. In fact, he's got more badges than his mates. He's got like fire making, sewing, being a millionaire. That's not many clubs. <laughs> <laughs> he only scored because it was Bob a job week. <laughs> <laughs> got at the goalie after. Got five p, Mister. <laughs> what meant he could stay out till ten o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> he has to play, but he has to wear his gym jams underneath the shirt. <laughs> Moment the game's over, it's straight to bed. You bed, you little tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Has his balls just dropped? Whee! <laughs> goal, but it's got to be something to do with goal, Is it? Is it? Ish. 
Not ish, no. no. Well, to explain the story, we asked England's hottest prospect himself, the finest talent to emerge for a generation, Liverpool's Jamie Carragher. <laughs> it just happens when Michael comes down to my local pub. And my mate in there called Tom when he seen him, he was just so excited to see him that he couldn't stop rubbing his hands together like that. <laughs> in case you were wondering, that video was subtitled for the Heart of Scouse. <laughs> Michael Owen's legs are insured for £60 million, which means he gets a payout every time he's injured. Although, being a Scouser, his claims are always checked very carefully. <laughs> Especially the one where he claimed for three broken legs and a camcorder. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Ian, we all remember where we were when we first saw Northampton Town's Carl Heggs score against Bristol Rovers in October. <laughs> but uh, here it is again. Gibbs had a look. And that's Corazin underneath it. Oh, that's well done by Carl Heggs! Team? Why did he boot his teammate in the head? <laughs> Vinny, you've never done that during a football match, have you? You've never kicked your own teammate in the face, have you? Not in the warm ups, no. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they were bang out of order. <laughs> so I've learning Cockney for today. <laughs> You're a Cockney, aren't you, Phil? No, I'm not. <laughs> Why don't you talk like that then? I was born on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> Parkers! Oh, right. right. Who rattled your cage, Jeff Lynn? <laughs> I can't talk cockney. It hurts your shoulder talking cockney, doesn't it? Because it's all like that. <laughs> so I can't do cockney. A fire came in my pub last night. Oh. What worries me is what they do if you miss a goal. They kick you in the face when you score. Mm. Well, you carry on worrying and then we'll get on with the call. <laughs> I reckon he's such a perfectionist that that pass, if you look carefully, was six inches behind him and he was off. <laughs> <laughs> and kicked a man in the face mm -hmm. with his foot. And it was hilarious. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Does he want to be an insert in this year's Nick Hancock's rip-off Christmas video? <laughs> I've actually no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Although it is available, Nick Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it a sort of... Sorry, what are you going to say, sir? No. <laughs> <laughs> Quite good looking for our side, isn't he? Gary. Yeah. I need to protect you against Vinny, don't worry. Who are you? <laughs> I'm just uh, a lovely chap who everyone thinks is sweet. Michael Owens, mate, just come from school, isn't he? <laughs> Excuse me, but that's Hi, a prefect's Ian. tie Ian. he's got on. <laughs> Ian. Vinny, sorry. Did you say smack him in the mouth. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to smack him in the mouth. Don't stand for that. I'm going to smack him in the mouth in a second. I just want to have a chat with him first so we can work this out. Jones, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I'll start writing your obituary now. God bless. <laughs> I've been on half an episode yeah. of They Think It's All Over before <laughs> his tragic death. <laughs> I think you better remind him he's only got two mates with him. I'll take you, Jones. I know the karate and kung fu skills. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> um, is this got... sort of an homage to. <laughs> Johnny Hartson's sort of chirpy assault on Ail Berkovich. Yeah, of course it is. Of course, it's going to be three points for that. And here is Carl Heggs to confirm the answer. Leading up to the game that week, there was a lot of stuff in the papers about John Hartson booting Ail Berkovich in the head. And I thought it'd be a good idea if I booted my mate James in the head like this. <laughs> 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 so Heggs was imitating John Hartson's notorious kick at Ail Berkovich on the West Ham training ground. Hartson has been described by his former manager as a Jekyll and Hyde character partly because of his volatile temperament and partly because he insisted on bringing a massive chemistry set to training <laughs> sessions. And so, at the end of that round, David's team have no points and Gary's team have three. Oh, good. Incidentally, I'm sure everyone is aware that Vinny and Gary have a bit of a history, so if anything does go off tonight, Gary, if there is any rough stuff, then just fix this image in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> it won't actually help, but it'll give you a bit of a laugh when he's yeah. kicking your teeth in. <laughs> 
Now, our second round is Sporting Bluff, where each team member reads out a statement, only one of which is true. The other side have to work out who's telling the truth and which two are about as convincing as Vinny's Welsh accent. David's team, your subject is Ireland's most famous medalled up to the eyeball swimmer, Michelle de Bruin. Here she is as Michelle Smith, storming to gold in the 200 metres individual medley at Atlanta in 1996. Smith's coming through again. Michelle Smith's done it again. Michelle Smith wins her third gold medal. And there is the president congratulating Michelle Smith of Ireland, who has three golds already in these Olympics. So, Gary's team, what can you tell us about Michelle? When Michelle de Bruyne's urine sample was analysed, the main ingredient was lager. When Michelle de Bruyne's urine sample was analysed, the main ingredient was anabolic steroids. The main ingredients were, shouldn't that be? I just read what's on the okay. card, mate. <laughs> you misread it. <laughs> when Michelle de Bruyne's urine sample was analysed... <laughs> How many years at Cambridge was that? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Sorry, question too hard? <laughs> hey! Oh! When Michelle de Bruyne's urine sample was analysed, the main ingredient was Scotch whisky. So, when Michelle de Bruyne's urine was put to the test, it was found to contain massive amounts of lager, steroids or whisky. Which one do we think is true? David's team. I know lager, steroids, whisky sounds like Rory's lunch. <laughs> Halfway through giving the sample, did she have to go down and change the keg? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the giveaway to me. It had a lovely head on it, which she actually pissed a shamrock into, you know. <laughs> and there it is. If, if it had a lovely head on it, it was like to be Bill Clinton's, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Did, have, you, so, have you ever been tested for drugs? Yeah, I got, I got tested twice. First time came out sparkling. <laughs> <laughs> Was it, um, as you gave it, did you say, now, this is the 86, this is absolutely <laughs> marvellous. Well, if it's whiskey, it'd be Black Bush, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> My favourite Irish whiskey, what are you talking about? What a lovely thought. You can't beat a large Black Bush, I always say. <laughs> you got one on your chest. <laughs> I wish. He's wearing one. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, um, it's the whiskey. The whiskey? Who said whiskey? I said whiskey. And let's see if you're right. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Three points, yes, Rory was, in fact, telling the truth. And this is true when drug testers from FINA, swimming's governing body, analysed Michelle de Bruyne's urine in January 1998. It was found to have been contaminated by a huge quantity of whisky, making it impossible to test properly. So much whisky, in fact, that if she'd drunk it, she'd now be dead. She's now been banned for four years. The drug problem in international swimming is now so pronounced that some female swimmers are actually starting to grow breasts. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to make it clear, though, that Michelle de Bruyne has been banned for tampering with her sample, not for taking drugs. Although, when she dived into a pool recently, she fizzed. <laughs> After winning at the Atlanta Games, Michelle de Bruyne agreed to appear as a guest on this programme, although she changed her mind when friends told her that we wouldn't take her seriously enough. Well, we may take the piss, Michelle, but at least we don't analyse it. <laughs> Gary's team, your subject is the big Swiss cheese of world football, the head of FIFA, Sepp Blatter. So, David's team, can we have the facts, please, Vinny, if you'd like to read yours first? Before becoming the head of uh, FIFA... Before becoming the head of FIFA... <laughs> Some geezer wrote this. Yeah, I know, terrible, David. It's typed, yeah. And before... <laughs> <laughs> no, before's a big word. <laughs> Hey, you know, after you want to worry about <laughs> Before becoming the head of FIFA, Sepp Blatter used to run the Swiss branch of the Tom Jones fan club. Before becoming the head of FIFA, Sepp Blatter used to run an organisation dedicated to the worship of women's suspenders. <laughs> Thank you. Phil? Before becoming the head of FIFA, Sepp Blatter used to run a nude mountain climbing club. 
So, FIFA president Sepp Blatter used to run the Swiss Tom Jones fan club, a suspender worshipping sect, or a nude mountain climbing club. Gary Steen, who's telling the truth? Mm. Mm. Tom Jones. Are you related to Tom Jones? Oh, no, because he's Welsh, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Red Indian? <laughs> I'll be a bit of red ground here in a minute, though. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to do to play for Wales, then? Because if you play... I mean, I could play for Ireland, because I once fell over in the Kilburn High Road. <laughs> <laughs> if any Jones not tough, we could take him any time we want. Just calm down. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, if he wants it, if you come and get it, I'm not going over there. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm shit scared. Um, <laughs> it's the Swiss branch of the Tom Jones fan club, do they, like, steal all the gold discs and then refuse to give them back? <laughs> <laughs> what are the other ones? Suspenders. Do you like suspenders on a woman, Vinny? Well, I can probably bet around your neck the way you're carrying on. <laughs> 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 Have you been on question time? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I'm wearing tights. <laughs> New Matthew? When you're sticking the pickaxe in, you be careful not to shove it in the wrong crevice. <laughs> <laughs> Rory used to do it. Mountaineer, didn't you? He was the Yeti. <laughs> Gary, you're the captain. I seem to have read somewhere the suspender thing. You say, David, let's see if you're right. <laughs> yeah, indeed, three points. David was right. In 1971, Sepp Blatter became the founding president of the World Friends of the Suspender Belt Society. <laughs> Blatter declared recently that English football is 30 years behind the times, so it's New Year 1969 and we're world champions. <laughs> Gary's only seven and David's only 34. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have six. We crack on with our photo opportunities round, where we discover just how low some top sportsmen will sink to get their pictures in the papers. David's team, what can have persuaded Old Trafford's Mr Chuckles himself, Alex Ferguson, to pose for this? <laughs> this is the only time I've ever seen a picture of Alex Ferguson, he's smiling. And he has to have two wombles with him. <laughs> Socially, that's got to be a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> Poor old Mrs. Ferguson. Every wedding, family function, birthday party. <laughs> Hello, is that Mike Bat? <laughs> There's only three arms there. That's probably why he's smiling, was he? <laughs> <laughs> is it an elaborate way, right, of getting Roy Keane on the pitch when he's under suspension? <laughs> you dress him up like that and you go, uh, we'll put the new lad on. <laughs> yeah, and Madame Cholet. And Roy King <laughs> has to run on dressed as a womble. <laughs> and then it's, uh, you know, some poor, oh, poor Michael Owen taken savagely from behind by great uncle Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's, oh, come on, it's some sort of keep the streets of Manchester clean. Yeah, yeah, of course. Do blah, 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 yeah. bling, isn't it? I'll give you three points for that. In fact, it was done to publicise the Keep Manchester Clean and Bright campaign. Writer Elizabeth Beresford had the idea for the Wombles on a visit to Wimbledon Common when her small son accidentally said Wombledon. Coincidentally, it was while strolling on Clapham Common that Roald Dahl's son pointed out the inspiration for Willy Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team, your turn. What do you think inspired Prince Nassim Hamed and Michael Jackson to stand next to each other? <laughs> hmm. Michael Jackson saying, bring me a small Arab boy who knows how to use his fists. <laughs> They've both taken they've both taken a hammering in the ring, haven't they, these <laughs> <laughs> Was that when Prince Nassim wanted to rearrange his face, but he was there too late? <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw this fight. Jackson went down three times and then spat in a bucket. <laughs> Cable channel there, mate. <laughs> I think it's because he was going in his video, one of Michael Jackson's videos, wasn't it? I'll give you the three points. Well done. Yep. The reason is that Prince Nassim has been promised a part in Michael Jackson's <laughs> next video. At the start of every fight, Nassim somersaults into the ring over the ropes. 
He got the idea from Frank Bruno, who at the end of every fight somersaults out of the ring. <laughs> Prince Nassim has announced publicly that he will devote his life to religion as soon as he's made a billion pounds. And, curiously enough, so have I. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have nine. It's time now for a pair of fully grown adults to put on blindfolds and grope some other fully grown adults as we play Feel the Sportsman. David and Phil, if you'd like to come out to the front, taking your blindfolds with you. Can Afternoon. we have our first Afternoon. mystery guest, please? OK, and your 90 seconds start now. Is that you making that noise? It's not me. <laughs> it's too slow for me. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? I got broom or two. <laughs> You've what? Just, I got a couple of brooms down. Jeez, just... ah, they're on my feet. Get off! It's, it's, it's a staff outing or something. I, I left them cleaning the east wing and look at them. <laughs> Oh, sorry. One, oh, hang on. This is a round... What's this? It's, a, it's not a particularly good hand extension. <laughs> Vinny, have you lost something? <laughs> <laughs> the Electrolux 1090, possibly the <laughs> finest... <laughs> well, I think Winter it's, Olympics. Um, it's, it's curling, isn't it? Yeah. Good it's curling. Team? So, uh, is, is it the British curling you? team? Yeah. Which ones did well in the Winter the, Olympics? The, well, the women or the... Correct. Well, well done. Yes, three yeah. points. That was a fiver well spent. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary and Rory, take your positions, please. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> I was walking over to Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this loud bang. <laughs> OK, and can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> Gentlemen, your 90 seconds <laughs> start now. Somebody come through the roof. Oh. It's Glenn Miller. <laughs> Somebody take a dive. It's not Klinsman. <laughs> it's a bloke on an elastic band. <laughs> Basically, it's a postman. They always have elastic band. <laughs> What have you got? Is it a bungee man? <laughs> is it a bu is bungee? bungee? Is bungee them a support? <laughs> bungee? This is good fun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, careful! <laughs> what? Careful. The bells. <laughs> you, well, you've got it? the event, but at what level? British it champion. Must be British. Or... Yes, a British bungee champion, Stefan Overbury. Yeah. 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 So, at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have 12. <laughs> now, 
We end the show, as always, with our hand-rubbing, whiskey-tampering name game. The team in the lead goes first, which is Gary's team at the moment. If you pass those down to your team. team. You have 90 seconds to get as many names as you can, starting now. Um, kickboxer, used to play for Arsenal, plays for West Ham. Oh, John Hartson. Yeah, good indeed. Uh, uh, tennis player, American. Female smokes a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Any of them. Yeah, come on, come on. Uh, Billy Jean. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, sick note. Uh, Spurs player, stretch it onto the pitch. There he goes. Darren Anderson. <laughs> Darren Anderson, that's right. Oh, a little uh, jockey, uh, Italian, lives in Newmarket. Uh, Frankie Dittori. Very good. Don't know this is a oh, baseball player. Say, you know, you know Steve, the snooker player? Say, Davis. Davis. Say yeah, very good. Very good. First yeah. name, one of those red hot. Red hot chili peppers. Yeah. Dave but, Chili Peppers. Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave Peppers. Chili Peppers Davis. Yes, yes correct. Um, ex Arsenal player, I think he plays for City now. His first name is the same as Merson, and his second, second name sounds like a very nasty operation. <laughs> Paul Cock oh, removal. No. Close. Very good. <laughs> Dick off. Dick off. Dick off. I would have given him <laughs> <a> cock removal. <laughs> <laughs> Character in Coronation Street, Len. Oh, <laughs> Something fair class, I meant. Len. Something fair Len. class. Len Possibly. is correct. Surname, not thin. Fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, yeah. Let this is, say. talking of, um, this, this is uh, an old, early footballer, apparently, and his first nickname was someone who's not thin. Fat. Yeah. Fatty. Fatty, yeah. And his second name? Fo fatty Fat. Ah, yeah. <laughs> this is good. First name is... <laughs> is does he? Songbird, little songbird. Tits. Yeah, tits. Nah. <laughs> now you don't get that one. Well done, you've moved on to 20. So, David, seems you've got nine, you need 11 to draw level. 90 seconds start now. It's a lady. Um, Miss? Yeah, uh, 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 her second name is like a swimmer, and her first name isn't Sharon. Um, <laughs> uh, fish. Uh, fish! <laughs> Yes, Sharon Fish. Good. <laughs> Come on. So the second name is. Let's go for a record. Well, no, Sharon. Wait, 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 how many swimmers do you want? Davis, but. Yeah, there we are. Oh, that's the surname. And the first name, Palmer. Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> no. Who shot Luke Palmer? Twin Peaks. <laughs> so we're in, we're, Silla Davis, we're going to have a something something laughs. <laughs> Laura! Laura. 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 Can you Davis? Play, play, play for Chelsea. Play for Chelsea uh, in the 70s. Bit of a hard man, like a bike. Chop Harris. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right, French hurdler. Uh, second name's a fruit. <laughs> Jean, a fruit. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, orange. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, OK. Um, um, uh, house go, the clever bloke, the taxi driver, for his clever. first name. Bob. No. <laughs> French Fred, 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 Fred. Yeah, uh, second name of fruit. Exotic. Oh. Uh, Fred, give me one. Not kiwi. Not pineapple. Come quack. No. <laughs> no. Banana. I'm told I can't like quit cheese. these. This is torture. Oh, yeah. Go, um, it's, it's an odd. Yeah, we are. <laughs> no, you can. So, so close. Fred, no. Yeah, then then go. So, David's team move on to 12, but the winners this week <laughs> are Gary's team with 20. <laughs> Feel at home, Vinny. Didn't last 90 minutes, did it? <laughs> so, it's thanks to David, Phil and Vinny, Gary, Rory and Ian. We're all off to party like it's 1998. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. They think it's all over again at the later time, 10 to 11 next Thursday. And tomorrow night on BBC One, a new series of comedy and chat presented by funny man Patrick Keelty. That's at 5 past 11. Well, it's not quite over, as the best bits and outtakes are available on this BBC video.